It's nice to have you here with us, Mr. Ramson. I'm honored to be here. So uh, the first question I want to make, uh, I want to start this debate, if, we can, you, if you can access the legacy of WikiLeaks work uh, regarding journalism uh, in the sense of the importance when we look at the global violence, interventions and wars since the beginning of the 2000s, how do you see the legacy of WikiLeaks works? I think, I think the legacy of WikiLeaks uh, will, in historical terms, when uh, people reflect back, uh, be quite uh, extraordinary. And it, it comes on many layers. If you think of the, about this, uh, this period of, of this century, uh, there's always a difficulty putting some starting point in an era. But let's say a, a certain era started in 9-11 uh, with the attack on, 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 the, on the United States. What followed was a, 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 a dark spin in politics and uh, uh, an attack on human rights uh, in Western countries and also these horrible wars that followed uh, the, in Afghanistan and Iraq and then the, the drone wars in several countries and what have you. So it, it marked a turning point in, in global politics which uh, uh, was undermining uh, the uh, the uh, security of individuals in, in in many aspects. We see attacks on on on, uh, on press freedom. We see, see an attack on privacy. We see, of course, direct violence, military violence, and police violence. This is happening all over the world, and this is instigated by this uh, attack by this one man in the cave in Afghanistan. As I would say. Secrecy by Western powers increased dramatically. You can see that in, in basically graphs on, on, for example, on, on the amount of documents that were put into secrecy category in the United States. We saw corporate secrecy increased as well. So on all level, there was a decline and journalism did not have the right answer for it. Uh, the Introduction of the scientific uh, journalism that Julian Assange created with the, the website and the idea that uh, we can push back by creating a platform for whistleblowers to submit information, raw information that can then be analyzed and published in entirety. I say scientific because that's the scientific method to basically provide the raw material to the individual so they can double check and in investigate by themselves. But of course, also we had went into this cooperation with uh, uh, mainstream media uh, and media all over the world uh, and even French media or whatever you call it to analyze the material that was published. So it was an explosion watershed, I would say, in terms of journalism. Uh, the publications of the files from Iraq and Afghanistan, I'm referring to the military files, the 250,000 docu documents from the Department of State in the U.S., the diplomatic cables, uh, the files from uh, uh, the, the assessment files of the inmates in Guantanamo Bay, it, it, it ripped open a totally new reality. And the impact, of course, was tremendous in political terms. Uh, and uh, I think we are seeing a changed world after that. Of course, the political impact was, uh, was uh, uh, quite obvious. It, uh, it, uh, in the beginning, it, it, it sparked a, a, a process or, or, or helped uh, uh, escalate the, what we call now the Arab Spring but, uh, or the Arab Awakening. Uh, and it, uh, it calls into question the legitimacy of this uh, uh, abuse of the empire of its position. It also created material for a lot of people to actually get justice that had not been deprived of justice, of war crimes or renditions. Uh, so the material that we published has been used in, uh, to get some form of justice for those who were wronged, to end the impunity of, uh, of war crimes and, uh, and illegal acts against, uh, for example, rendition people. It was used, in, uh, for example, in the El Masri case in, in the European Court of Human Rights and was a very important document and proof. Uh, the documents from the diplomatic cable can be said to have led to the final withdrawals of all troops from Iraq, uh, because the Iraqi government, uh, after it was some elements were established in the, uh, the diplomatic cables about uh, 
uh, wrongdoing and cover-up of, of abuses in the country after 2003, uh, the, the government in Iraq could not lo no longer uh, provide the U.S. military with uh, um, uh, a commitment of total sanctuary for all wrongdoing, and that led to the withdrawal of troops from Iraq. But the other important story, uh, which is often over overlooked because it's ongoing, is uh, uh, the uh, exposure which are inherent in the reaction by the United States of America and other countries that are collaborating with the U.S. and how they responded to this, these leaks. And, and that is a, a, a very important story that is still ongoing with the imprisonment of Julian Assange, with the uh, attack on, 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 on the organization and other who work for the organization. That is an ongoing story and the proof of uh, how uh, far the uh, superpower is willing to go in the act of revenge is astonishing. And that story, the reaction story, will probably be, in historical terms, as important story as, uh, of the WikiLeaks story. It is the action and then the reaction. And that often happens in journalism. I mean, the most famous example, of course, is, is, is Watergate. It was not the stealing of the papers, but it was the cover-up and the lies and the break-in into the Watergate building uh, and the cover-up and the lies about it that, that caused uh, the resignation of Nixon. So you have, and that is of course the ongoing story that we are dealing with at the moment, uh, which we would happily be without because as journalists we want to be just to be doing our jobs. But this is now happened to me, my job and my colleagues to put all the emphasis that we have on trying to end this persecution and this violence against Julian Assange and this lawfare that is ongoing. Uh, because we recognize as all major organizations in the world today that this is a, an attack not just on Julian and Wikileaks, it's an attack on press freedom worldwide. Uh, so if I may, uh, you mentioned Watergate and that was a famous case of, of exposure. If you could elaborate a little bit more on that, uh, thinking about context, what it is different from the 70s in, in concerning actually also what you said about the persecution or the reaction to journalists and, and journalist, uh, uh, journalistic endeavors in the 70s and in the 2000s? Well, the comparison is, is uh, chilling in many respects because we, I think we tend to look back at the 70s as being the dark period of, of, of Nixon era where the bad things happened. But actually the Nixon era and the bad things happening in, in, in that, that uh, framework of time is much less severe than what we are witnessing today. So it, we are in a much more precarious situation the, uh, and journalism uh, and, and, uh, the, uh, is under much severe attack today than it was back in the day. Uh, and I, just as an illustration, uh, Daniel Ellsberg, uh, who was the uh, person who leaked the Pentagon Papers in the same period and indirectly had uh, an, an effect on, on, the, on the Nixon re uh, resignation, told me, because he's a huge supporter and he came to London, and uh, he said that if I had been doing uh, what I did as a whistleblower today instead of in the early 70s, I would have never seen a, a day as a free man. I would never have been uh, gotten off. They would have locked me up for the rest of my life under the certain regime, under the certain, uh, the, the same sort of situation that Julian Assange deal with. So we are, and that's a chilling thing to say. We haven't progressed, we have regressed. We are now at a worst, worse state uh, than, than, uh, than 50 years ago. So uh, we, you already started talking about this, but if you, so we talk about the legacy of WikiLeaks. What are the challenges today? And we can think about important things that happened a year ago, uh, the US withdrawal from Afghanistan in a terrible way. We have the Ukrainian war now. How WikiLeaks, but not only WikiLeaks, journalists, uh, 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 initiatives can help maybe can, can 
help build, I would say, a more peaceful world, or if not peaceful, a more accountable world. I agree with Julian Assange when he said that our primary aim should be to stop wars, not just to expose the wrongdoing in wars. And uh, we, we are not there yet. Uh, we have to admit that. Uh, you talk about the Afghanistan, which is the, the longest uh, war that the U.S. Uh, has uh, entered into and uh, ended in a rather humiliating uh, manner for them after billions of dollars of, of uh, expenses and the human cost in human lives that is, of course, you cannot count in, in monetary value. Uh, if people had paid more attention to uh, the Afghan files that were published in 2010, this would have ended sooner. It would have been 10, 12 years instead of 20 years. Because there was nothing new in the evaluation that led to the decision, okay, let's end it. Uh, that was not already there in the files 10 years earlier. So th this is, a, in, in fact, a bit disappointing that it was not, uh, uh, did not create more attention to actually uh, quicken the end of this horrible spectacle that was not going anywhere. The, how can we uh, contribute to uh, uh, preventing wars? It is a difficult situation and it is getting more and more difficult because uh, there is a, are forces in play in our societies internationally that uh, are working against uh, any chance of, 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 uh, of that becoming a success.